Hi, Rose. Thank you so much for submitting to the Research and Writing Studio. My name is Anna, and I had the pleasure of reading your draft today. What you're looking at in front of you is essentially just an overview of the things I'm going to be talking about in this video. So that way, when you're revising your essay, you can just refer back to this screenshot uh, instead of watching the whole video again or anything like that. All right, so let's dive right in. I found your essay regarding the narrative device of tears and crying and that kind of stuff really, really interesting. The ability to find something so unique and really human as tears and and spot that within many different texts spanning different you know time periods different authors different places is really unique and interesting and it really made me think a lot about how like human tears are and how powerful they truly are so that was super super interesting so major props to that um, in terms of what I wanted to primarily talk about in this video, uh, it mostly regards the assignment prompt and expectations. So answering the question itself. And I know that was one of your main concerns as well. So uh, the assignment you sent me, um, it looks like it's your midterm and you have to answer one of the following questions in an essay format. So when I was reading your essay, I was able to identify how you kind of talked a lot about how there's the presence of tears and the power of tears, but I didn't see any specific correlation um, or really reference to any of these prompts here. Um, and that's something that you really want to make sure you achieve and include within your essay, right? Because that's what the professor is going to be looking for, is the answer to the prompts that they have given you, or to one of the prompts, I should say. So after reading through these prompts, um, I was able to identify that number three, I felt like could best be a match to the essay that you have as a foundational base right now. Um, I was able to kind of think about, you know, how to maintain uh, most of the essay uh, without trying to, you know, change the thesis, because I know that you um, had mentioned that you didn't want to change the thesis uh, in your form, um, but you were definitely open to restructuring. So that, what that means is we're going to try and, you know, you know, really evaluate the evidence that you do have, um, evidence that you may need to add, and then also, you know, refocus our analysis to make sure that we go back to this idea of the prompt. So the prompt is asking for you to really discuss the effectiveness of a certain genre, so two different genres. So whether that's an autobiogra uh, autobiography, a personal narrative, public letter, or an essay. So you're going to choose two of those, and you're going to talk about how those genres allow for the effective communication of someone's ideas in the long 18th century. And then you're going to make sure that you mention three different texts um, within your curriculum that you have uh, gone over. So what I have done is I went through your essay and I kind of was able to identify the different genres that you already have present um, in your essay. So you reference a lot of texts here, but most of the texts that you reference, if not all of them, are um, personal narratives or um, autobiogra autobiographical works, right? So what I kind of went from there is I said, okay, that's awesome. And this work is so valid and I wish we could keep all of it, but we want to make sure to kind of maintain a strong focus and purpose of the essay. So when I was going through these, I kind of evaluated your Equiano work. So your right up here is the first time you mention him. And then you mention him um, a little bit later as well, uh, somewhere down here, right over here. Um, and I found both of those paragraphs really interesting. And then I also really enjoyed your Elizabeth Ashbridge work right over here. So what I would recommend from there is kind of using those two sources as your main argument for personal narratives and autobiograph autobiographical works, right? Um, and then based upon that, you would then move on to a public letter or an essay. Um, and so I didn't identify any sources that you mentioned already in the essay that were technically uh, qualified as one of those. Um, and I'm not familiar exactly with your entire um, course uh, coursework that you've done. Um, so what I'd recommend is make sure you go back into these sources and really look at something that would fit with these things um, and then kind of fit it into your outline, which I have a suggested outline down here that's super, super, super basic, but it kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking for, right? So, you know, your intro thesis, you already have that. 
Um, and then this could be, you know, your Equiano work. So that would be the combination of both the paragraphs, right? Because just for your structure, keeping, you know, the two sources uh, or one source together is going to be the most effective for your argument, right? So here is where your uh, Equiano work is going to go. And then you're going to have your evidence and analysis. And then maybe your Ashbridge work would go here. And then your choice of whatever genre would go here, right? And then a note that I'd want to make sure for restructuring is your analysis should definitely include, you know, how the text effectively communicates the idea of tears, right, in the long 18th century. So you can still absolutely remain truthful to that that tear theme that you've brought here, and because it's really valuable and it's really important, but that way you can still be able to restructure this essay to properly answer the prompt. Uh, I hope those resources helped you. Feel free to resubmit your draft if you have time and get a new pair of eyes on it, or you can respond to this thread as well. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.